Well, uh, let me let me talk about people in therapy and and what what happens to mm. a person. <clears throat> Humans want to understand themselves. And understanding themselves means being able to think about what's happening. And while I have no doubt about there being a great deal of communication that occurs outside of conscious awareness, when people go for help, they aren't interested in outside of the outside of the consciousness. What they're interested in is learning what's wrong mm. and what could make it right. Mm. And so, the, the cognitive aspects of therapy, I think, are extremely important. Mm. Uh, And uh, if I if I refer to one thing that Byrne emphasized, uh, which I think is in effect the key to effective psychotherapy at the cognitive level, and that is Byrne's questions in the book Hello, which are Who am I? Who are they, and what's happening? Mm. 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 And, and the answers to those questions can be found by learning what the person believes. Mm. Mm. And, mm. As in psychotherapy, as I learn what a person believes, I am able to understand how their beliefs impose limits on their ability to function in the way that they want. Mm. So, I would say, if anything, my approach in psychotherapy is to focus on the limiting beliefs that people hold about themselves and others. Hmm. But there's another, there's another aspect of it, and that is, it's one thing to discover your limits, it's another thing to be willing to experiment going beyond those limits. Mm. And, that's, and that's really difficult for people. And from my point of view, that's where group psychotherapy offers great advantages over individual therapy for two reasons. First of all, the group, in essence, is a living laboratory. Mm. And in that living laboratory, when I'm there as an observer, I can see how they relate to other people rather than hearing their filtered answer of telling me how they relate to other people and how other people relate to them. Mm. So that's very clear for me. The other thing is that the group provides a person with an opportunity, a safe opportunity, to experiment with being different than they are in their day-to-day -day living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a safe place to do that. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest challenges, as far as I'm concerned, with individual therapy is that nobody becomes different except by experiment mm -hmm. discover that they can be different mm -hmm. and very few people live 
in a social environment that supports experimentation. Mm. It's from from the point of view of one social network, it's much better if you stay like you are than to change. Mm. 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 One of one of the one of the indicators for me is that a person was accomplishing some of the things they wanted to accomplish mm. was when when they began to report that their friends and family were complaining about their changes. Mm. 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 I I remember <clears throat> one instance of mm. a man who was who was a university professor. He was mm. a very reserved, a very mm. reserved man, mm. and he realized that he was he was rather rigid and limited, and he wanted to he wanted to have more feeling and more real relationships with people, and he was so guarded, mm. <laughs> and. Uh, at one point, uh, after he'd been, been involved in therapy for a period of time, there were some problems with an adolescent son, and he asked me if, if it would be possible for me to just talk to his son mm -hmm. and, and see if I could offer some suggestions for direction for the young man. Mm -hmm. but the boy came in. The boy came in and. I asked him, I said, uh, how is it for you knowing that your father has been my patient? He said, well, doctor, to tell you the truth, I think he's getting kind of fucked up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I said, well, tell me more. He said, well, he used to be, he was very quiet. Now, he wants to give us hugs and things like that. I mean, we don't know what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A very, very graphic example of how much one's social network, including family, is accustomed to you being a certain way. When you change, mm -hmm. it's confusing, if not painful. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I occasionally, with with clients who had done quite well in their therapy and were about to finish, uh, I suggested them they <clears throat> they might return to some of the people they know before and uh, contact them and say, perhaps I resemble somebody you formerly knew. Mm. Okay, so it's it's very interesting how the family um, absorbs the change is is very challenging. Um, yeah. At the same time, the group helps the person to um, experiment because in the family group, the, the experimentation is not so easy. Yes, that's true. The family doesn't like the experiments, but the group supports it. Yes, so this is very interesting. The, the, the group, in that sense, the group is a social microcosm. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for saying it because this emphasizes the importance of group therapy. Thanks for um, this particular message.